Hi, this is Martin, Technical Account Manager at GitLab. Today I will show you how groups and projects work in GitLab. Afterwards, Osnat will give you a quick demo on how to set up your own projects and organize them in groups. We will be looking at what groups and projects are in GitLab, what they are used for, how to manage users in these groups and projects, and the demo will show you how to set up groups and projects in GitLab yourself. First, the repository is where all the files you work on are tracked and versioned to enable working on it collaboratively, that is, the code, documentation and configuration. Now the repository is only part of a project. The project is the core building block where work is organized and managed in issues, where code is reviewed in merge requests and where the software is built and delivered in CI-CD. In the project, we also have the people working on it with their specific permissions. These are the project members. A group is a collection of projects. Any amount of projects can be filed under a group. In addition to that, you can also add members to a group. You can use groups to organize related projects, add members to the group, and so grant access to all projects at once. You can also use groups to organize teams, grouping people that work together. This is useful to add a whole team to a project or to add mention all members of that group in issues and merge requests. Groups can be configured in GitLab or you can sync them from an external authentication provider like LDAP. Groups also have additional features like epics and group issue boards to manage the contained projects on a higher level. You can create subgroups in the group. Subgroups are just groups that allow you to organize and manage the teams, team members and projects across your organization even better. Now let's take a closer look at the permissions. Group permissions of the members define the minimum permissions in subgroups and projects. Minimum permission means that if a user is both in a project's group and the project itself, the highest permission level is used. Let's look at an example. Here we have Jack, who is a developer in the group. That means, at the minimum, he will have the developer role in all contained projects, subgroups, their projects, and so on, automatically. Of course, permissions in groups and subgroups can be raised separately, and users from outside the group can be added to individual subgroups and projects as well. Above the groups, we have the GitLab instance itself. It can contain multiple groups. It can also contain the personal namespaces of the members, which, unlike groups, have neither direct members nor group features, just personal projects. And finally, all users registered in the GitLab instance can be seen and administered here. Now Osnat will show you how to set up your own projects and organize them in groups. Now that we've seen what groups are and why do we use them, let's see this in action in the GitLab UI. Here I have a group that I have created to hold my users. Sometimes it makes sense to have separate groups to manage projects or users. Such is the case, for example, when syncing LDAP user groups into GitLab. In my case, I have the all users group with no direct members. Under it, I have two subgroups, each contains users. To view the group's members, click on the members in the group side menu. I will now create a group to manage all my projects. To create a group, either click the plus icon from the top bar or use the new group button. When creating a group, I can choose its visibility level, private, internal or public. This will impact any of the subgroups or the projects in that group. Now, I want to create my first project in the All Projects group. To create a project, either click the plus icon from the top bar or use the green button.
To view the project's members, go to Settings, then Members, from the project's sidebar. Currently, we have no members besides the one who created that project. Let's add members to our project. First, I want to add all my developers. To add a group of users to a project, go to the Invite Group tab, choose the group, choose the role, and click Invite. Now I want to add a single user. Under the Invite tab, I find the user, choose the role and the optional expiration date, and invite them. Now I can see my project's members. I can also add members as groups or single users directly on the group level. Those group level members will have access to all the subgroups and projects in that group. When viewing my project's members, I can view all the members, only the direct members, or only the inherited ones.